Welcome back. You're watching AIM Agenda. Let's take you live to the New South Wales Premier. Now, Chris Minns making a major announcement in Rose Hill. About 25,000 new homes to be built. Let's listen in now. He's taking questions. So whether there are other locations, but uh, obviously we have to take into consideration costs and the potential uplift for new residencies and new houses. And that's a big part of the reason why Rose Hill in particular is so attractive to the government because its location as a racetrack for over 100 years, it's one of the last parcels of land at any great scale that is uncontaminated from industrial waste that's been accumulated over a long period of time. It's for that reason why this makes a lot of sense in terms of her turning land into housing and open space and recreational space in a short period of time. Um, well, Metro West is going ahead. Uh, the decision to go ahead with the program and the project is not contingent on Rose Hill or other sites on Metro West line. This is a much needed piece of infrastructure for the city. We're very hopeful that the MOU with the ATC will come to fruition and we can achieve 25,000 dwellings on this land which means that the economics of the project have been transformed from the government's perspective for two reasons. Yes, it's an expensive project. It's the most expensive capital works project of any jurisdiction in the country. However, we are going to get a major uplift when it comes to housing. And it marries two things that we spoke about extensively in the election campaign that we're actually delivering in government, and that is building housing where there is public transport infrastructure, putting the two things together, which we believe has been the missing link when it comes to infrastructure in the city. There was a lot of, uh, or quite a number of people suggesting Metro West should extend east out to Moore Park, potentially Randwick before circling back to Zetland. Yeah. Is it a missed opportunity that you haven't extended Metro West east? Would you regret that in any time? A, a government may make that decision. And obviously we expect metro lines and the public transport infrastructure to grow over time. But I have to be real, really realistic about the amount of revenue and capital and debt that we have on hand to build public transport, to give certainty to the sector so that people know where homes and houses and dwellings and public transport will be built over the foreseeable future. So I think Sydney and New South Wales has had a gut full of four, five, six, seven metros being planned for 20, 30, 40 years into the future. We're giving certainty for this project. We're committing the dollars. We're allocating the housing. We're showing the people of Sydney exactly how this city will grow. And I expect, I expect future parliaments to make decisions about extending metros west and east in the future. Yeah, this site is larger. It's well located on this metro line. For example, if you were to get a metro from a future Rose Hill station, roughly speaking, 17 minutes to the middle of the CBD, five minutes to Parramatta. And in terms of open space and dwellings that are well located with infrastructure, frankly, you can't beat it. This is one of the last parcels in metropolitan Sydney of uncontaminated land to do dwellings at scale. And we know we're on the hook for it. I mean, every government's been on the hook for it. But basically, for decades now in New South Wales, governments have issued media releases saying that housing is on the way and that it will ease the chronic housing shortage that we have in Sydney and then never delivering. As a result of these changes to zonings across the metro lines, as well as what we hope to be a transformative project in Rose Hill, the people of Sydney can see that we're getting on with it. How much? Yeah. 15% across all of the announced changes to zonings in Sydney, and Paul can speak more about that. In relation to Rose Hill specifically, of course it will have a social housing component, but that's to be determined through the MOU. A new metro station at Rose Hill has been, we, we've been told by uh, Metro, Sydney Metro, that it's more than half a billion dollars. 
And when you consider that Sydney would get an extra 25,000 dwellings for a city that is already experiencing near unparalleled housing crisis, this is an easy financial decision for us to make, particularly when you consider the envelope is already $25 billion. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't make, it would not make that the project unviable. In fact, the economics of this project have transformed as a result of our zoning changes. And this does two things that the previous government were unable to do and, and frankly, governments going back a long way in New South Wales. We are marrying infrastructure with housing. So we're putting infrastructure where housing's going. In the past, we've either had infrastructure but no uplift or we've had brand new housing but nowhere near enough infrastructure to cope with the increase in population. So what's the final price tag, including what you're paying the ATC? Yeah, we can't give you that today. Why? Primarily because we haven't finalised the MOU with Rose Hill. However, there's a couple of things that are really important in terms of the, the, the price tag. The, the line doesn't have to substantially change. And the big costs with altering Metro West that would add substantially to the final price tag would be to alter the route. And as a result of Metro already traversing this site, but there being no uh, box, no station, we believe that we can do it in a cost-effective way while getting a major uplift. So we've said it'll be more than half a billion dollars, but when you consider this project costs $25 billion and we are already putting in more zoning changes across the route, the economics and the financing of this project have dramatically changed. Plus the acquisition of the land. How much are you playing for the acquisition of the land? Zero. Nothing. ATC owns this. They'll be rezoning it and they'll be develop it, developing it themselves. Sorry, I can't. There's too many questions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty straightforward. The economics of building social and affordable housing on government land, it, we want to do it. We see it as a priority. And our, our agenda in terms of the commercial realisation of that land is different to a private developer. Of course, that when, commitment stands. When will the MOU with the ATC be finalised? Because like, you're saying it's not set in stone. You're hopeful it will be. But yeah, I, I, would, I would describe it as we are very confident that this MOU will come to fruition for a few reasons. It's clear that the ATC want to do this. It's important for racing. It means an enormous amount of private capital to reinvest in the sport, and we want it to happen as well. So um, we're very hopeful, but there's an unsolicited proposal process that we need to formally go through, and we're both committed to that. And that should be completed, we hope, in 2024.